let's bring my guy Tone in here. Tone, would you would you agree that if you're gonna if you're here, I'll walk back with some of the things that we said earlier um, when it comes to questions. Let me throw this at you. Um, okay. Would you agree that that potential problem still exists late in ball games, closing teams out? Say you got a 24, 14 point lead with 11 minutes left. Right. If you're not relying on Hertz to carry the ball, do you have enough in the backfield to be able to run that clock out? Because as soon as you start throwing it and you get a three and out, that stops the clock and you give possessions to the other side of the field there and you bring teams back into the game. Do you think that still exists with a potential with this team this year? You know, it's definitely going to be, it's going to remain to be seen because uh, there were moments the last season that this team allowed certain teams that shouldn't have really been in the same room as them. They allowed them to get back in it. Uh, one game that comes to mind, uh, that Green Bay game, uh, the Eagles had a stranglehold on that game and they actually knocked Aaron Rodgers out of it. So they should have ran away with that game of flying colors, yet they allowed Jordan Love to come in and still sling the rocket through. I think he threw maybe a touchdown or two, and they kept that game close, and they ended up winning 40-33. Uh, to 33. Um, Overall, I think when it comes to closing out games this year, I actually don't think it's going to be on the offense. I think it's going to be on the defense. That, mm. that, 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 that's where my, where my concerns really lie. What are you looking for tonight? I mean – you're probably not going to see a lot of telegraphing because right. New England will probably look at this game plan tonight. And anyway, you don't look at really scores or any, I, I don't particularly look at scores and I'm not looking for that. I'm kind of looking for possessions and such, but for mm-hmm. you, what do you want to see tonight? What are you looking for? What is going to be a couple of position areas? I'm going to be paying very close attention to who's not on the field uh, because that's going to tell me, how they see these guys, right? If I see Rashad Penny or Trey Sermon on the field for more than a quarter or two, if I, if I see, for example, there was a game where we saw Kevon Wallace out there for the entire game. That tells me that they don't really, they don't really think too highly of him because the Eagles look at it like this. If we see you as a guy that's going to carry over to the, to the 53 man roster, we want to preserve you as much as possible. We don't want to, we don't want to put you in a position to potentially get hurt. Uh, They took, Terrell Emmons off that field at times. They took uh, Sidney Brown off that field. Uh, Reed, Reed Blankenship hasn't played a preseason snap at all. So I'm going to be paying playing, paying close attention to the guys that's not on the field. And also the two positions, in my opinion, that deserve a lot of attention. I mentioned already the safeties, but also the running backs as well. Um, I'm curious to see how this running back room shakes out. We know Swift is going to make it. We know Kenny Gainwell is going to make it. I want to believe Boston Scott is going to make it because he's one of those vested guys that you you know you know that you keep on the roster. He's multidimensional. You can do a few different things with him. Um, but other than that, uh, there's no guarantee Penny is going to make this roster, and there's no guarantee Trey Sermon is going to make it. But if I had to roll the dice, I would probably say they keep Trey Sermon because they play the position similarly. But Trey Sermon has less miles uh, on the body, and then with the safety position, um, obviously Reed Blank- they're going balls to the wall with Reed Blankenship. Uh, they believe in him. Uh, that's what I'm seeing. Um, but when it comes to that, uh, that other safety uh, position, if I had to really choose the guys that make it, I think it's going to be Sidney Brown, Terrell Edmonds, and, and, and Justin Evans. I don't think Kevon Wallace makes this roster. If I'm them, I'm locking in with Reed Blankenship and Sidney Brown. I'm, I'm, I'm throwing everything in the kitchen sink at those guys because the, the schedule only gets harder. This, if, if, if you're going to get a guy used to what's going on, Put put them out there right now against Bill Belichick and against the Rams, you know, against against those teams that don't really aren't really on your level. So I I, I think it's best to really get those guys out there as early, as early as possible. This is how I'm reading Jalen Hurts's training camp in his off season. Yeah, and I said it earlier, Tone. I, I'm like, you know, you, you really don't get a good sense of what a quarterback is doing in training camp because he's got the orange vest on and you're not going to hit him. You're not going to put him on his back and such. However, when I keep hearing people say, Hey man, Swift is getting implemented into the game. They're getting a small screen game going. Um, also you're hearing this and Devonte and AJ Brown just look so much better. Well, the quarterback's got to get the ball there. And to me, what I heard that they're working on is blitz pickup and recognizing a blitz 
and blitzing him. Because last year, I thought they got him on the ground a few times in critical situations. Not enough to cost him anything critical in games. But there were times where they would get him. In the Super Bowl, there was a time that that ended up happening. I think he's – I think probably the, the – he's seen the game more is where I'm probably going. Right. And you're hearing that the wideouts look better. To me, that's a reflection of him. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's funny. You talk about it all the time. Uh, even though Hurts doesn't get the credit he deserves as a passer, well, the reality is Devontae Smith had a career year. A.J. Brown had a career year. Uh, he also brings so much to the running game with a guy like Miles Sanders, who had a career year as well. All that stuff doesn't just happen by accident. You know, a lot of people like to say, well, um, if if you put this person there or put this person here, you know, will you know, will, you know, would Jalen Hurts be who he is? Well, the reality is if you're going to develop a guy, a guy who maybe doesn't have the raw natural ability like a Herbert or uh, a Josh Allen, or a Patrick Mahomes, guys like that. If you don't, if you don't see that cannon of an arm, or or he does, or he doesn't have those raw natural abilities that people love to rave about, then you're going to have to do a little more to make sure he gets where he needs to go. You're going to have to do a little bit more to make sure uh, he develops the way you want him to, because it's hard to develop a guy in a situation where there's absolutely nothing around him. You know, there's I can't think of a quarterback that developed without having anybody competent around him. Uh, Jalen Hurts, he was throwing the ball to Jalen Rager. He was throwing the ball. Uh, to Quez Watkins, who's not even a number two in my humble opinion, um, barely a number three sometimes. Yep. Um, and then his the first year you actually give him a quality situation. AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, Goddard came into you know began to come into his own. You saw Jalen Hurts really maximize that situation. But again, I'm not just going to put it on the guys that are around him. Jalen Hurts is a guy who has put in the work in the off season, and it kind of upsets me when I see people kind of, you know, try to just limit it to the pieces that are around him because that kind of diminishes the work he's put in throughout the off season. It, 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 it diminishes who he is, who, who he is, in, you know, in essence. And Jalen Hurts is a guy who continues to put in the work and he continues to defy the odds time and time again. So me personally, I can't see myself saying, well, I only see him being this good or that good because he's surpassed my expectations once before. So who's to say he can't do it again? What would be um, more of an expectation to you, more passing? I mean, is it a numbers thing or is it a player thing that's around him? Because here, let me give you an example of this. Just because you have Kevin Durant and you have James Harden and you have Kyrie Irving and you put them on the same team. Exactly. That, that resulted in shit. I'm so have, glad you said that. I'm so glad you, you can said have that. all the greatest talented people around you all you want. By the way, you know, everyone says that Jordan played with all those guys. Well, let me ask you this. All those starters that he had, and I know, I know, um, Rodman already had three, uh, two rings from Detroit. But when those guys all left, like Pippen and all them other guys, and went somewhere else, I mean, what did they do? Scotty Pippen didn't do shit when he left. I mean, there's no, certain right. guys that make guys better around them, and to me, that to me is it. And you know, you and I have talked about this. Okay, so Hertz is not a four thousand passing. Yeah, but the back had a career year. The tight end's now considered a elite dude. The two wideouts had career years. The old line had career years. Jalen didn't. Well, he did. He did from the year previous. But you right. know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, Tone, I think it's more important on being a facilitator like Steph Curry and striking when the when you need it than sitting there putting up. I, I mean, I'd rather be Steph Curry than James Harden, put up 45 versus putting up 32 every day. But winning titles, that to me, I mean, I, I I think he gets penalized for the team he's on. Yeah, like the reality is Philadelphia doesn't really get a, a fair shake in any in any mainstream conversation. That's just the reality. I thought but, that was bullshit for the longest time. But now having seen it, I, I agree with you. Yeah, it's it, it's an unfortunate reality, but, you know, it's a part of the game. And uh, it's something that we learn to live with. Right. You know, being born and raised in Philly, you understand that. Nobody really wants to see you be great. No one wants to see you win. Everyone thinks lowly of you or, or, don't, or they don't really have the highest expectation of you. You see how they talk about our city. They keep bringing up Santa Claus. They have it in the yeah, city. Yeah, but Tony, you don't have a chip on your shoulder. You got, you got, a, you, you got a lumber yard. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 know, um, you know, bringing it back to Hurts, he, again, a guy who has, who has a lumber yard on him. And, you know, he, he's a guy that no matter what you think he's going to do, He's going to surpass it. Like you asked me a question. What's an expectation for him, right? Is it numbers? Is it 
you know, you know, things like that. No, for me, I'm not of the mindset of, yeah, Jalen Hurts is going to throw 4,500 yards, 40 touchdowns, 700 rushing yards, eight, eight rushing touchdowns. That, I, don't, I, I don't look at the game that way. I look at the quarterback position like this. Do you execute the offense at the highest level? Do you take advantage of the opportunities you're given? Do you get the ball from point A to point B without putting it in harm's way? Are you making guys better, right? Your numbers, in my opinion, I could care less about that. That's, that's for fantasy football talk. That's for the betters. But when it comes to me, I like to really watch the game um, from an objective point of view, and I really like to watch it from the point of view of are you winning or are you losing? If you're winning, what did you do to get to that win? I'm going to be honest with you, um, Big Sills. I don't really care what Jalen Hurts' numbers look like. Is he winning? Or is he losing? Is he executing the offense at the highest level possible? Or is he a detriment to the offense? Is he putting guys in position? Or is he becoming a liability? That's what I care about. I don't care about the numbers. People, I, 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 leave, I leave that to fans that care about fantasy football or, or who want to win debates with their friends. I don't care about winning debates. I care about winning football games. And as far as the expectation, he's showed me what the expectation was. The expectation is to win the Super Bowl. So if Jalen Hurts don't care about his numbers, why the hell should I care about his numbers? Jalen Hurts cares about one thing, and that's winning Super Bowls. That's all I care about. You ask Angelo a question. Did Jeffrey Laurie underachieve uh, one Super Bowl in 30, or, uh, 30 years? He said slightly he underachieved, and he broke it down. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm going to agree with Angelo, right? I think Angelo's trying to be a little nice, but the reality is – He was? <laughs> 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 I love Angelo, man. As a matter of fact, <laughs> super grateful that I'm super grateful that I'm even on this slate with you and uh, Angelo. That was that's exciting in and of itself. But this team has underachieved. One Super Bowl, thirty years. Come on, now we deserve more than that. I've seen I've seen too many talented teams come through the city and not enough confetti fall down. So I'll put it to you this way: I think Jalen Hurts has the mentality, like Angelo said. Doug Peterson had the mentality to win that game. Nick Foles had the mentality to win that game. We didn't win that Super Bowl because we had the quarterback that had the mentality, but Nick Sirianni, he failed when it mattered most. He deviated from who he was all season. And so was, you think you you agree with Angelo then? On, I'm a Doug guy. I'm a Doug guy. I'm a Doug guy. There's no, there's no so you subscribe to what he said that if Doug was the head coach of that game, that the Eagles win that Super Bowl. I firmly believe that. I firmly believe that because think about the way Doug handled the Super Bowl uh, in 2018, Super Bowl 52. He knew – he understood the assignment, and that's the least you can do when it comes to going into a game like that. You got to understand the assignment. You got to understand who you're going up against. He was going up against one of the greatest coaches in NFL history, going up against the greatest quarterback in NFL history. I don't have time to be patient. I don't have time to be passive. I have to leave it all out there. I got to hit them with the kitchen sink. I got to hit them with the furniture. I got to hit them with the monkey wrench. I got to hit them with the house. I am not wasting time here because I don't know when I'm going to get back. That's why you saw plays like Philly Philly. But no. Nick Sirianni got past the fourth down. He got a little shaky. Jonathan Gannon got shaky. You know what I'm saying? So, so when I look at it from that perspective, I, 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 I like my coach that understands the assignment. And there was a and in that second half of that game, Nick Sirianni and Jonathan Gannon, they got tight, and you saw it. The only person that understood the assignment was Jalen Hurts. How about this? What what Angelo said too about Gannon? He he just again and. You know, when you have Jim Johnson and you have an aggressive Jim Swartz and you have guys like that, Buddy Ryan, that have been staple defensive-minded guys that have been in Philly with the Eagles, and then you have a guy like that that was passive-aggressive, and then you hear stories of him not being completely vested. You know, hey, we're, we're getting John McMullen on tomorrow, and I love John, but I'm, I disagree with him. I do not believe that Jonathan Gannon was 100% vested when he knew he was going to get the Arizona job and he and his wife were out house hunting and it just so happened that the Super Bowl was in Arizona. I think that may have even been more of a problem Recipe for than the turf that the game was there where he was going to get the job. I mean, do you agree with that whole assessment that he had that he was bad for the whole the, – the, the players won in spite of him? You know, I, I'll put it to you this way. Well, first and foremost, I do believe he was distracted. I, that's just my opinion. You know, I, you know, I don't, I, I don't cover the team closely, you know, like most reporters do, you know, I don't have, you know, I don't have access to Novacare, you know, I, I don't have access to none of that, but me personally, knowing what I know and how everything played out, I personally believed he was distracted. Why? Because like you said, the Super Bowl was in Arizona. On top of that, I know what it's like to look at your own plate. 
I know what it's like to look at someone else's plate without focusing on your own. I've been there before. And that second half, he was fo- he was too focused on not making a mistake. He was too focused. He, he, he they got tight in that second half. And the way things played out in the draft and you know the way it came out, I'm telling you, there's more to this story than what we all know. And I, I'm just of the mindset that he was distracted. You know, I, I find it hard, but I find it hard to believe uh, that he wasn't. Two last questions for you. Sure. Are you? Um, am I too concerned about Nicobe Dean? That's a good question. That's that's a really interesting question because I'm concerned about Nicobe Dean. So I mean, like, how can you not be concerned? You know, like but I, Tom, the one thing I want to before you go, I, yeah. I, I want to clear though. I'm not really talking about his talent. I and and people think that I'm dogging the kid. I don't think you are either. I, I'm not. I don't know. And neither do they. <laughs> so <laughs> they, they wonder. Okay, I put it to you this way: people want to pretend, and because again, after you know, creating you know creating content and being on YouTube for a while and just learning the game and all that kind of stuff, and you you, you start you start to realize that you gotta you gotta take your eagle colored glasses off and really just look at the situation as as it stands. I'm an Eagles fan through and through. That's never going to change. No one's ever going to take my Eagles fan card. So I don't care what they say <laughs> about what I say. So I, I I have my opinions. You know, I got jerseys. I bought I buy tickets. I've been to games. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 listen, my fandom doesn't blind me to the reality. And the reality is, Nicobe Dean, whatever he did in Georgia, this is the NFL, baby. That don't mean nothing. College gets you here. College don't keep you here. So the way I look at it, he has a lot of pressure on him. Now, this has nothing to do with his skill set. Nothing. This has nothing to do with his effort. This has nothing to do with his ability to learn. This has everything to do with we don't know what he looks like in this situation under these present circumstances. You never know who you are until you're tested. It's easy to judge somebody in a moment of peace. Try judging them in a moment of chaos, and you'll find out what you really have. We're going to see what we have in the Kobe Dean very early because – the Eagles have regularly been getting their linebackers torched year after year after year. That's been the number one weakness on his defense. I remember that game two seasons ago. Tom Brady came to Philly, and he was cooking our linebacker core, just just, just, just putting them on a skillet, salt, sauteing them and everything, Big Sills. So the way I see it, what's going to tell, what's going to tell me a lot about Nicole Dean is not just how he is in defending the run. How is he in pass coverage? Is he limiting the damage, right? How was he with defending tight ends? I'm going to be paying attention to all of that because I'm not going to pull punches just because I like him. I like Nicole Dean, but if he's not delivering, I'm not, I'm not going to act like I don't see what I see. So the reality is we don't know what we have in Nicole Dean. People need to stop pretending like they know they need to stop banking on what he did in college. Cause that means absolutely nothing today. He played 34 snaps, let it go. The reality is you don't know what he is. We're going to find out, though. So Do you be think patient. he's the biggest question mark of the entire team going in? Because to me, he's the quarterback of that defense. I mean, I think the most underrated player on that defense a year ago was T.J. Edwards. I mean, he was the guy who did all the dirty work. He got none of the fame. He got paid in the offseason for his work because he goes to Chicago and they give him $7 million, which I don't think is a ton of dough for a guy with 160 tackles. And actually, if you think about it, here's a guy that gave you 300 tackles in two years. And you let 300 tackles walk out the door like that for a guy that's 34 snaps? Tone, I mean, it's a risk. you're asking a ton for that guy. It's a risk. It's a risk. You know, uh, before T.J. Edwards got picked up by Chicago, his, his average market rate was around $9, $10 million. That was That was the anticipated – market rate for him you know average annual salary that was that's, that's what people predicted he ended up getting six and a half we the eagles could have afforded that they could have afforded that but they decided not to they were so hell-bent on giving the kobe dean this opportunity and like i can't remember who said it in the live chat but you know you brought it up as well i want to see why they're so convinced yeah someone brought that up and said hey look man i mean i got I questions but i want to know like why that. the eagles are so confident in this kid yeah. I, I, I want to see it because if, because look if he if he's playing well yep. hey you know that, that, that's great but if he's not we're going to talk about it and people and people need to be honest about it if he's not playing well don't don't start talking about excuses like well you know um this person missed their assignment listen 
he we're going to see very early and very and very obviously if he's the guy or not. It's it's not going to take long. Absolutely. All right, Tone, I appreciate it, brother. Thank you so much, man. That was great stuff as always. You already know, big dog. Thank you. I appreciate you. You got it, man. That's really cool. Do me a favor, everybody. Please hit the like button. Keep it here on the National Football Show.